Hello one and all, my name is Rio and welcome back to another match day preview. So, on the back of a solid start to our new campaign on Saturday tonight, Chester FC are back on home turf where we host Curzon Ashton in our opening home match of the new season where we do look to record our first win of the new campaign. So, given we fought back from 2-0 down in our curtain raiser over in Yorkshire at Farsley Celtic only a couple of days ago, we got off to a decent start in the end. Therefore, it is all the more important we do back that up with three points later on tonight. So, I really cannot wait for tonight because it will be our first league match at home. Played in front of no restrictions since our 3-2 home defeat over Brackley Town back in February of last year. So I thoroughly cannot wait for tonight because hopefully we can look for a crowd of around about 2,000. Which I do think would be relatively decent for a Tuesday night. And also it will be our first of two home matches this coming week where in a few more days on Saturday we do entertain Gateshead here at the Diva Stadium so hopefully we can get our home campaign off to a flyer so I really cannot wait for tonight I do have my season ticket for the Harry Mack all ready now so I really cannot wait should be a belting night under the lights because uh, night time matches here at Zadiva throughout the years have always produced many special moments. So hopefully it will be another night to remember later on today. So anyway, without further ado, my match day preview will be coming up right now. So stay tuned. I really do hope you all enjoy it. If you do, please feel free to like subscribe and also comment down your score predictions below so without further ado let's get into my match day preview right now enjoy <laughs> the beginning of any season always produces cagey affairs so it will not be anywhere near plain sailing later on this evening However, with all due respect to Curzon, it will be one of those fixtures we do look at at the beginning of any season where we do have to win. Thus, nothing but three points would be deemed as a disappointment. So anyway, our last match was on Saturday where we drew uh, two all away against Farsley Celtic in what was your obligatory game of two halves. So to begin with, the opening half was shocking from us because we were all at sea defensively while Farsley's high pressing up the pitch remarkably shell-shocked us. It only took about five minutes for Farsley Celtic to break the deadlock because Tyler Walton smashed across the face-off goal and into the far corner to make it 1-0 to the Yorkshire side. On the approach to the half hour mark, things became even worse for us because Adam Clayton nodded in to make it 2-0 to Farsley Celtic. With half time on the horizon though, George Waring provided us with a lifeline to make it 2-1 because he powered home a header from a delightful George Glendon cross. That goal came just at the perfect time for us because we did at least have something to shout about after a shocking half. Meanwhile, our performance in the second period was much more better because it was us who, would, who were the more dominant side and as a result of that, we were unlucky to not have even won the game in the end. With the final 20 minutes of the match within sight, it was that man again, George Waring, who nodded in a lovely cushioned header to make it to all for us. Although we equalised with a chunk of time left, 
we couldn't find that winner, but regardless of that, a draw is still a rather decent result after a horrific opening 45. <laughs> I only have one Seals story to talk about today, so anyway, back on Sunday, striker Sam Turner signed a one-year professional contract for Chester FC after impressing in our youth team before immediately joining Lower Breck on a season-long loan, having been there since July the 23rd. So it is absolutely brilliant that yet another academy lad has joined our long conveyor belt of players who have made the step up to our senior team because Sam played a pivotal role in our under-19s National League Alliance Cup success last campaign where they beat Easterly in the final over at Worcester. Therefore, let's hope that experience will put him in a really good position to fight for a senior team place in many years to come. Also, Lower Breck do ply their trade in the Northwest Counties Football League Premier Division, so let's hope Turner will receive plenty of game time this campaign because I do I do look forward to watching Sam Turner develop and also progress with us. So anyway, I would like to wish Sam all the very best and hopefully he will have a really successful campaign at Lower Brick and also hopefully he will be back here in a year's time with a lot of positives on his CV. <laughs> Curzon Ashton will be making the venture from Greater Manchester, looking to create another comfortable season at this level. Unfortunately, last campaign was, of course, brought to an early close due to Covid, but the Nash was still sat in a decent lower mid-table position in manager Steve Cunningham's debut season as Curzon manager. And also, given the Lancashire side did have a really impressive squad, they could have easily pushed on even further had the pandemic not intervened. Unfortunately though, for our opponents, a number of their key players from last campaign, such as arguably one of the best goalkeepers in our league in Cam Mason have departed the Thameside Stadium while our own selves, Chester, have done a mini raid on Curzon given we have lured Jude Oibo, Darren Stevenson and also Dan Cowan over to the Diva Stadium. Therefore, I do think it will be a more challenging season for our opponents this time out. However, the arrival of former Liverpool player Jack Dunn will certainly give them a big boost, as will Adam Thomas, who, as will Adam Thomas, who has already won our division with Stockport County a few years ago. Furthermore, not one, not two, but three, yes, three, really familiar former Seals, will be making a return to the Diva later on tonight in Craig Mann, Matty Waters and also Craig Hobson. Therefore, I really do hope we do give them a warm welcome home. However, regardless of that, I still hope they are all on the losing uh, side come half nine tonight. Anyway, to begin with, firstly, right winger Craig Mann signed for us from Vauxhall Motors back in May 2013, where he had an absolutely superb tenure here given to this very day he does still hold our record for most appearances since our reformation. In Marnie's first campaign here, uh, he did join AFC Fylde on a brief loan in October 2013 before returning to us in November 2013 while he had another loan spell out at Ashton United in December 2019 before returning to the Diva in January of last year. Sadly though, 
all good things do have to come to an end. Therefore, Craig's next move was on a permanent basis where he joined Altrincham later on in January of last year before moving to Curzon Ashton last August, which is where he has been at ever since. Meanwhile, left back Matty graduated from our youth academy uh, to our first team back in July 2016, where he was another really, really good servant for ourselves, having uh, waited a while to be a regular fixture in our side. In September 2018, Matty joined City of Liverpool on a month-long loan before returning to us in October 2018, while sadly last August he did depart us on a permanent basis before joining Curzon Ashton later on in August, which is where he has been at ever since for roughly a year. Lastly, striker Craig Hobson joined us from Geisley back in 2014, where even though he was really hit and miss, he is still really well known for not only scoring our equaliser in our unforgettable 2-1 home win against Wrexham, while later on in about 2015, Hobbo also scored our winning goal away at Macclesfield Town in an absolutely remarkable game because with about four minutes to go in the 89th minute, we were 1-0 down. However, we scored twice in injury time in the Cheshire Derby to win 2-1 on an unforgettable day. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Hobbo did depart us to join Altrincham in July 2016, while he did join Curzon Ashton in January of this year, where he has been at ever since. So like I alluded to, I do have a lot of time for all, uh, for all three players because they were superb with me when they were here. However, as much as I do love them, particularly Marnie and also Matty Waters, like I say, I do hope they are on the losing team come about half nine tonight. <laughs> Here is our head-to-head -head record against Curzon Ashton. So in total, we have played seven, won three, drew one, and also lost three. So rather surprisingly, we do have an even equal record against the Nash. So in that sense, hopefully we will get to the upper hand over Curzon tomorrow by getting a win. So anyway, our most recent meeting with Curzon was back on Tuesday, October the 27th, 2020 in the Vanarama National League North, which was a 2-1 home win. So I do remember that game really well because George Glendon scored an absolute corker to win us the game behind closed doors. So uh, it is a bit ironic really because in our most recent three games at home against Curzon, we have lost two. However, both of those games were actually in front of uh, full home crowds. So I do think for both, we got over 2,000. So funnily enough, uh, our two home defeats against Curzon since reformation have both been in front of decent home crowds. However, our only home win against Curzon was last season, which was played in front of absolutely no one. So hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, that will not be a sign of a bad omen given tomorrow night. It will be played in front of a full crowd again. So hopefully, uh, given we do have a poor home record against Curzon in front of a full home crowd, hopefully we can rectify uh, that tomorrow night. So anyway, here are all three goals from our most previous game with Curzon. So here they are right now from a really important win last year. So hopefully we can expect more of the same later on tonight. George Waring takes the ball into the penalty area. Elliot will take over. And Elliot rolls it into the far post, off the post, into the back of the net. And with 10 minutes to go till the break, it's Danny Elliott and Chester that take the lead here. It's Chester 1, Curzon Ashton 0. To the former Chester left back, crossing towards the near post. To Knowles turns and he smashes one beyond Louis Gray. And that's the equaliser for Curzon here. Chester 1, Curzon 1.
Dom Knowles with a great touch with his back to goal to turn and just fire one low and hard past Louis Gray to get the Nash. The equaliser just switches it to the far side this time. Johnson brings the ball in field. Rolls it across towards Glendon. Edge of the penalty area. Glendon will get a shot on. Oh! And what a finish by George Glendon. 20 yards out. George Glendon has smashed one past Cameron Mason into the back of the net. And with seven minutes to go, it's Chester 2, Curzon 1. And what a finish by George Glendon. Our last match was on Saturday where we drew two all away against Farsley Celtic in our opening match of the new season in what was a really eventful affair and also it was your stereotypical game of two halves because to begin with in the opening half we were absolutely woeful because we were all at sea defensively, we had no ambition or direction and even though the pitch was a lot more better than originally anticipated, we failed to capitalise on that by, uh, you know, failing to play the ball on the floor of us. Instead, uh, we had a tendency to just hoof the ball up, which really rarely worked. So anyway, to begin with, only five minutes into the encounter or only five minutes into our season. Farsley Celtic made it 1-0 courtesy of Tyler Walton who fired into the far corner and I do think it was absolutely horrific defensively because I think it was Simon Grand uh, well, he should have stayed with him because to begin with in that particular move, Simon Grand was marking him. However, Tyler Walton just ran away from Grandy and he couldn't really keep up with him. So I do think it was Simon Grand's fault for that goal because he should have stuck with his man. And I did feel a little bit sorry for Louis Gray because I, I don't really think he could have done a great deal t uh, to prevent that goal given it was his far post. However, things did eventually get even worse for us because Farsley Celtic made it 2-0 courtesy of Adam Clayton. So again, another schoolboy goal to concede an amateur defensive error yet again because a cross went in towards Adam Clayton. I think it was either James Hardy or Simon Grant again. Well, uh, they just stood there like robots. And all Adam Clayton had to do was simply dink in to the back of the net. And even Louis Gray, he was just rooted to his lines. So an embarrassing defensive goal to concede, given I did say a few days ago we do supposedly have one of the best def uh, defences in our league. However, before half time, we were given a lifeline to make it to one thanks to George Waring and my words, George Glendon it was, it was our two Georges who did link up. However, what an absolutely outstanding cross by Glennon to get the ball in because he did really well to get to the byline. However, his cross was a piece of brilliance because he just crossed it in with the outside of his foot because he is such a good player and it fell all the way to Giwas to dink in at the far post. So we did go into half time, even though for the rest of the half we were shocking at least. We did have something to shout about. However, our second half showing in the second period was so much more better because like I alluded to before, we could have even won the game given how many chances we did have near the end. However, our man of the moment, George Waring, did make it to all to us to equalise with another really similar goal because a cross went in and he did really well to tower above the Farsley defence to not home, yet another beautiful goal to make it to all. We did have further opportunities to even get a winner. However, in the end, we did have to settle for a draw. So anyway, all four goals from our curtain raiser will be coming up right now. Enjoy. 
and also please look out for me because I was uh, having a good old chuckle before when I was looking when I did uh, watch the highlights yesterday when uh, they did come out because if you watch really closely behind the goal I am one of the chaps in a yellow t-shirt and for both goals I went absolutely nuts because for our first I was you know jumping all over the place and uh, for our equaliser, I ran like halfway behind the goal, and I turned around, and uh, there was a bit of a pile on. So, yeah, what a really good away day to begin our new season. And here is all of the action right now. Enjoy. <laughs> Here is our form guide going into tonight's encounter, which is really average given we have played five, won only one, we have drew two and also lost two, which is really average. However, hopefully we can go on an upwards trajectory starting from tonight. So, anyway, our first match of our last five was an away pre-season friendly at Trafford back on Tuesday, July the 27th, which was, even though it was an absolute cracker of a game, unfortunately we were on the wrong end of a seven goal thriller given we did get beat 4-3. However, we did make up for that a few days ago because on the following Saturday we did get back to winning ways with a 3-0 home win over Fleetwood Town. Meanwhile, the following Wednesday, in our final home match of pre-season, uh, we got another really good result, which was a goalless 0-0 draw at home against a Bolton Wanderers 11 team. However, there is a bit of a twist because even though it was a Bolton Wanderers 11, uh, they did play a significantly stronger team than originally anticipated with about a handful of senior players all playing. Therefore, to keep out a really good Bolton team was a good achievement. However, unfortunately, our pre-season campaign was ended on a, uh, on a sour note because the following Saturday we did get beat 3-2 away at Nantwich Town. However, some two weeks later, on Saturday just gone, we got off to our new season in the league in the Vanarama National League North with a relatively solid 2 all away draw at Farsley Celtic. So anyway, even though we got off uh, to an OK start on Saturday, hopefully we can record our first win of the new season later on tonight. Meanwhile, here is Curzon Ashton's recent form, which is rather poor to be honest, given the Nash have 
us who played five. However, they have failed to win a single game with them picking up zero wins while they have drew two and lost three, which is uh, not too great. However, uh, four of those games have only been pre-season games. However, uh, while so far in the league, Curzon are unbeaten like ourselves because on Saturday their league campaign also got underway with a draw, so we are level in the table with Curzon. So, anyway, to begin with, back on Saturday, July the 31st, in a pre-season encounter, Curzon got hammered 4-0 against Stockport County at home. Meanwhile, a few days later, on the following Tuesday, Curzon got beat 2-0 away at Hyde United in a Thames side derby. However, even though it was a friendly, uh, not a great result for Curzon given Hyde to play one league below them. However, in a way, a few days later, Curzon uh, did make up for that by picking up a really good one all home draw against Altrincham, which, which was a good result for them given Ulti do play one league above Curzon. And Curzon's last game of pre season was two weeks ago where they got beat 3 1 away at our arch rivals. Wrexham uh, away from home, so sadly Curzon couldn't really do us a favour against our nemesis. And lastly, Curzon kicked off their new Vanarama National League North season a couple of days ago on Saturday by uh, with a one all home draw against Geisley, which isn't too bad really. However, even though Curzon did get a decent draw the other day, hopefully we can condemn them to their opening defeat of the new season tonight. My key Curzon Ashton player to watch out for for later on tonight is Craig Hobson, who is a striker and also a familiar face. So Hobbo began his career back in September 2009 at Kendall Town, where later on in that month he moved to join Staleybridge Celtic. Three years later, Craig moved to Stockport County, where in February of 2013 he joined Lincoln City on loan. He latterly returned to Stockport at the conclusion of his loan at Lincoln, while in July of 2013, Hobbo joined Geisley on a permanent basis. Meanwhile, in March of 2014, Craig joined the one and only Chester FC from Geisley on a permanent basis, where I do think he was really average here. However, in big games, like Wrexham at home and also Macclesfield Town away, which I did uh, talk about earlier, he did really well. Hobson's time here came to an end two years later where he departed us to join Altrincham, while exactly one year later on July the 1st, 2017, Craig moved over to Wales to join Aberystwyth Town. Meanwhile, a few years later in 2020, so only a year ago in July of last year, Hobbo joined Clivero, while lastly in January of this year, Craig did move to Curzon Ashton, which is where he has been at ever since. So although I do uh, admire him for, you know, some of the things he did do here, like I say, hopefully our defenders will be able to contain him, while I also do hope like I alluded to before, Craig will be on the losing team come about half nine tonight. My score prediction for tonight is Chester FC 2, Curzon Ashton 0. So for us, I think our two scorers will be George Waring and also Jude Oibo. So I do think George will manage to bag his third goal of the season and also his third goal in only two matches while I do think Jude will be able to bag one against his former club given we did raid Curzon for Aibo a few months ago so I do think it will be a convincing home win tonight and I do think as a you know supporter base 
I do think we do have to rule our lads on for the entire game to hopefully get us over the line. So, although Curzon, uh, they are, you know, quite an established club for our level now, and although there may not be any pushovers, hopefully our quality will be too strong for them to live up with. Our away following at Farsley Celtic, the other day was immense. Therefore, we do have to recreate another strong atmosphere later on tonight in order to help us secure our first three points of the new season. So given this fixture is now on a Tuesday night rather than on the initial Saturday, an attendance of 2,000 plus would still be rather good, so it is really important we do back our lads to the hilt because our work rate and also fighting spirit produced on Saturday does highlight what a special squad we do have here. If Anthony Dudley does still continue to miss out again due to Covid, it will obviously uh, be a big blow for us. However, George Waring stepped up to the plate superbly on Saturday, so hopefully he will keep up his great start going. While Josh Askew definitely also has to start at left-back uh, too, because he did make a difference when he came on at Farsley, while I would also start Judo Ibo against his former club too, given he made a lively impact on Saturday. So anyway, I am thoroughly looking forward to tonight because hopefully the atmosphere will be bouncing. Hopefully we can pack the diva out to draw us on to our opening win of the new season. So anyway, like usual, I will be off to the game tonight. So look out for a match day vlog, which will be uploaded after the game. So anyway, of course... I do thoroughly hope you all enjoyed my preview for today. If you did, please like, subscribe and also comment down your own score predictions below. So here's to a memorable game later on tonight. Come on, you seals. Let's do this.